The following program is paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Fresno on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Craig Barton. Good morning, Central Valley. I'm your host, Craig Barton, and welcome to the Real Estate Radio Network, the most important hour of radio each week here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to bringing some rational thought to this crazy world that we live in and helping you to rebuild the Central Valley's housing and credit markets. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice. And that's exactly what you are going to hear every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. right here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, as always, it is so good to have our special guest host, Miss Michelle Pettis Cavalli, superstar extraordinaire. Superstar, I like that. Thanks. Yeah, that, yeah. did yeah. I, I did I paint a good pretty was, picture? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Michelle joining us in the studio here today. Michelle is a licensed realtor and a trusted local professional. Michelle, as always, thank you for getting up so early. You're welcome. Thanks for having this me. This is a little better time slot for us than the usual four to five a.m. that we're accustomed to. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. You know the coffee. I didn't have to drink quite so much to, get <laughs> to help you over the hump yeah. this Sunday morning. Yeah. A- and might I add, Happy Easter, Michelle. Thank you. Please, no one throw eggs. Yeah. No throw eggs. <laughs> yeah. Happy Easter. Hopefully, we're on the third floor, so it's going to be hard to to get know. the eggs up. My kids up. gave me a little warning. Mom, we're with you on Easter. You know, <laughs> we're we're on the uh, what is it? The northern exposure side, so we're, all the windows are easier to reach, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Well, happy Easter Thanks. to all of our listeners. Well, Michelle, the beauty of real estate radio is that it gives us the opportunity to reach so many people efficiently for one full hour each and every week. You know, our goal is to get you, our listeners, the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back Back home. home. I love that. Okay, keep going. Did you add that to our Facebook page yet? No, I didn't. I've been been ineffective on Facebook. What does a guy got to do to get a little helper on this place? I think I need to have my laptop in front of me while we're here. (laughs) Just as a, how about I send you a reminder? That would be helpful. That, that would I be calendar helpful. you <laughs> and Facebook. Well, today um, on today's show, we are going to talk about winning in today's real estate market. Winning for a second, I said whining. <laughs> and I'm like, I do have a few of those clients. I'm you know, trying it, to keep them under wraps. It's funny when I said uh, the, the, when I started to really uh, spend time talking about or writing about today's show, uh-huh. putting down thoughts. I said winning in today's real estate real estate market and I immediately thought of Charlie Sheen. Why? Winning I I don't know. It was probably a sick and twisted <laughs> moment like, in my wowzers. life. That, I'm not sure he's the winner he used I, to I be. I don't I don't think he's appropriate to bring mm-hmm. up in today's conversation. So he's had his three seconds of, of yeah. fame. Yeah. Let's talk show. about Sheldon. He's cuter. Yeah, he's okay. a winner. There you go. Different well, show, different Winning different means different things to different peoples in today's real estate market. Well, we're going to break down the process um, of purchasing a residence, whether it be a primary residence, a second home, an investment property. We're going to help to get you armed with some of the do's and a few of the don'ts and to help set the right expectation as you hunt for the perfect home. Make sure you stay with us. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime on our off air number at 800 979 3958. Again, 800 979 3958. You can also check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com or use press for keyword KMJ Call Valley Wide to get connected to us. Any time. We would so love to hear for, from you. Well, you heard me say press for keyword KMJ call Valley Wide. Well, we want to help show you that you'll only need one button for the rest of your life. Well, what is press for? Well, press for is for all those times that you're away from your computer and listening to our show. Now you can get what you want with just one simple push of a button on your mobile home. Did you I, say it again? I did it again. Oh, my gosh. On my your... mobile home does not have that button. I'm just letting you all know. <laughs> oh, 
I it's am, really cute. I though. am losing it with one Who push of a button on your mobile home. <laughs> Press four. I meant to say mobile phone. Is that the four wheels you underneath know, that's it? That's just or? bringing the real estate component back into the conversation because we're, we're we're here talking because yeah, mobiles are a tough sell in today's yeah. market at times, <laughs> and it's obviously <laughs> tough to say as yeah. well. Well, oh, how do you funny. get Press 4? Well, just go to the mobile home press, uh, excuse me, just go to the Press 4 <laughs> website at press4.com <laughs> and follow the easy setup instructions. Press 4 will work on any phone. Yes, any, even dumb phones. Yes, even dumb phones. Well, during our show, you're going to hear us say things like, to call into our show, just use the Press 4 keyword, KMJ, call, call Craig. Craig, or KMJ, call Valleywide. And in this example, your phone will call into our show. One button really can do it all. That's it all really need. can. It really can. You know what? And it's and it's vocal. I'm going to challenge. Push the button, and then you say. <laughs> so it's great in the car. Mm -hmm. You push the button at the light, and then as you <laughs> zoom away, you're calling us. I love it. Exactly. And then they yell, "Damn, Jake, call Craig." It's the easiest way. One it of is. the easiest ways to get a hold of us. It's awesome. Well, in today's Find Your New Home segment, again, let us let us help you <laughs> through the home shopping process, or at least simplify the home shopping process for you. Well, let me ask you, listeners, how are you searching for your dream home? In today's busy world, do you really truly have the time to spend wildly and waste a bunch of time searching for your new home from door to door? What do you say, Michelle? <laughs> help me help you. Excuse me. Is this home for sale? <laughs> well, so many clients, I tell you, they're spending time on the Internet hours and hours yeah. and hours searching truly a Zillow, Realtor.com. I hear Zillow so much. It's like everyone everyone thinks that Zillow it's is. It's the Bible of real estate in their the opinion in some case. Up. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah no. They spend more time on the computer than they do in the car when we're out looking. You know, that's why it's incumbent mm -hmm. upon us to help show them mm -hmm. that there are so many different search options, but we want to help simplify searching for their new dream home. Otherwise, information overload is exactly what you Absolutely. are going to get. Well, did you know that there really truly is an easier way? I know you knew, Michelle. I do. It, Loving that search engine. And if our listeners, if you didn't know, let us help. Well, go to reofresnohomes.com. If you'd like to drive the bus, on the right-hand side of the page, about a halfway mm -hmm. down, it says find your new home. Sign up, input your search criteria, and before you know it, we will start emailing you listings based upon the search criteria that you input. Or if you would like us to help set that search up for you, and you'd like us to drive the bus... <laughs> <laughs> I like to be in control. You, <laughs> I like to drive. There you, you like to drive. Well, I like good. To drive. Well, you can call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958 or use press for keyword KMJ, call, call Valleywide. Valley and Michelle, yes, no, Michelle. I want to help them. No, help me help you. Help That's me help <laughs> you. <laughs> exactly. Michelle can help simplify the search for your new home. Well, let's take a look at today's hot property. We'll and nothing it. simpler. We, we, you got that right. This is awesome. Yeah. Every single week over the last five weeks that we have done the hot property segment. Uh -huh. And, you know, we can't, as much as we'd like to give credit to our 11 million listeners. That I think we're at 11 million one now. 11 million one. Yeah. yeah. 11 million the and one. The newest numbers show. Well, I'm recruiting. I told you I got a friend in Oklahoma now. Yeah. <laughs> and now she's a listener. <laughs> I'm YouTubing. Yeah. Good. I'm YouTubing you. Good. Well, each of the last five weeks, the hot property after the show, it's immediately gone into contact. Nice. I don't know if there's a correlation there. But I think there is. Hopefully that 11 million listeners, 11 million and one. One. To get don't us forget some, the one. Exactly. Well, today's hot property, 113 Armstrong Avenue in Clovis, California. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,495-square-foot home built in 1984. It does have a pool. This particular property is a HUD home, and as we've discussed before, a HUD mm -hmm. home is actually owned by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. All that means is the previous owner had FHA financing on the property. Uh, FHA is a government-insured program. Unfortunately, the folks lost their home back to their servicer. Their servicer filed an insurance claim with HUD. HUD takes the property back and markets the property as a HUD home. Clovis Schools, right down the street from Mickey Cox Elementary. Walking distance, let me tell you, you can see the school from the front nice. steps. 
All this for only one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars. This particular Isn't that property. Amazing? This particular property was appraised for one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars about two weeks ago with an FHA appraisal. Nice. Okay. Well, if you'd like more information about today's hot property, please give us a call anytime on our off air number at eight hundred nine seven nine three nine five eight, or use press for keyword KMJ hot property, and we'll send more information about this hot property right to your phone. Look for more hot properties each week right here on the Real Estate Radio Network. Well, after the break, we are going to talk about owing more, did I say owing more than what your home is worth? And what are the options to you as a homeowner? You are not going to want to miss this. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 Six zero. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, are you upside down on your mortgage? I tell you what, how many times... Um, I thought we were talking about winning <laughs> in real estate. We are. We're Let's talk get, about being upside down. Winning. Pineapple we're, upside down, Kate? What are you doing? <laughs> we're going to get to winning oh, okay. a little bit later. Right, we got a, we've got a few things, a few housekeeping <laughs> things okay. we've got to take All care right. of. Well, again, we're going to talk this week about HARP 2.0. HARP nice. 2.0 is the uh, new and improved older brother or younger brother. I don't know exactly how you'd say that, but of HARP 1.0, excuse me. Well, today's HARP 2.0 update, uh, we're going to talk about HARP 2.0 because of the significance of this program and how it might help you if you owe more than what your home is worth. Well, the Home Affordable Refinance Program, which is a program created by the Federal Housing Finance Agency, has now been upgraded. And we keep talking about this week after week because we were expecting originally, based upon initial initial response as far as the as in terms of the secondary market and really how it was how everyone really wanted to welcome it with open arms <laughs> not yeah <laughs> really it was not widely accepted what we saw is that it was a situation that so many doggone basically the only way you could really take advantage of this particular program is if your mortgage was serviced as well as owned um, it was a, a Fannie or Freddie Mac owned mortgage, but serviced by one of the big guys, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Chase, Ally Bank, formerly GMAC. That was really the only time that you could take advantage of this particular program. Well, now what we've seen is we've seen the secondary market begin to welcome these higher loan to value guidelines. In other words, now you can own. Oh, now you can own. Now you can <laughs> Yeah, they're not transferable. <laughs> owning now, and yeah. owing are way Owing different. and owning, big yeah, difference. Big yeah. difference. Um, now you can owe way more. In other words, the loan to value is unlimited in terms of what you owe on your mortgage. So okay. let's simply just say this. If you own a home, and whether it's your primary residence, whether it's a second home, mm -hmm. a vacation property, mm -hmm. or whether it is an investment property, we now have greater options for you. As an example, one of our investors that we do that Valleywide does business with mm -hmm. just rolled their guidelines out last week. And initially, what they had told us is, we're not getting involved. We're not getting involved. <laughs> Talk to our rep. We're not getting involved. How about this week? 
They're how about, involved. How about now? I bet they're digging. How about they now? They want them. Well, they guess, want them, Guess they? what? They ripped the Band-Aid off uh-huh. last week. They rolled out the guidelines. And it was really exciting because we had heard, you know, scuttlebutt was, is that most lenders were going to cap maximum loan to values of what you could owe, i.e., if your house is worth $100,000 and mm-hmm. you owe anything in excess of $125,000, you're out of the program. You're out of the program. Well, in this particular instance, it gives you the ability to owe an unlimited loan to value. Now, let me just say this as a word of caution. It has to be a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac owned loan. If you don't know whether the, and that doesn't just mean, hey, the, my servicer is um, Aquin Bank or mm-hmm. One West mm-hmm. Bank. Let's say One West Bank. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's owned by One West. The underlying owner of that note. And how could, do consumers figure that out? Though? Well, funny you should ask. All they need to do is contact us. Mm-hmm. You can call us on our off air number. Um, anytime, 800-979-3958, or you can use press for keyword. KMJ HARP 2.0. You got that right. Nice. And we'll send you more information about the HARP program right to your phone. Uh, what I was going to say there as far as a word of caution is concerned is it may not make sense for you to refinance. And for a couple different re- or a number of different reasons. How far upside down right. are you? Is there and and um, <laughs> mortgage insurance? Is there mortgage insurance? Right. Are there multiple liens? Right. Um, is there ever a point down the road that you are going to get that you're going to be that you're going to have equity in your property? Right. Um, hard to say. Right. And everyone's circumstance is different. Bottom line: if you can make your payments, mm-hmm. contact us or contact your servicer. And we'd be glad to, deter- to help you determine if the loan is owned by Fannie or Freddie. But the numbers aren't going to lie because are you going to be able to? We've priced a number of these out mm-hmm. as of late. Um, and you're looking at somewhere, uh, somewhere north of 4.5% in okay. terms of an interest rate Okay. Um, in order to refinance an owner-occupied property where the LTVs are north of 125% loan to value. It does give you options. So if you're paying 65 Right. And you're able to reduce it down to four and a half. It might be enough of a band aid to help keep you in your home long term. Um, if you'd like to have that discussion, we'd love to be the other, you know, the individuals on the mm-hmm. other side of the phone mm-hmm. to be able to help talk you through that. Because some folks, uh, refinancing may not be an option. Right, right. But if they're going to be in their home long term, and their home is for enjoyment and their family. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to check it out. Maintaining that stability as yeah. far as your family is concerned, as far as your, yeah. your children are concerned, absolutely. is absolutely positively huge. Right. Let me tell you. Right. It's got to make dollars and cents, though. We exactly. know that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, now let's take a look at some of the hot stories in today's news. Well, not all struggling homeowners are on equal footing. Well, not all distressed homeowners or loan borrowers will benefit equally from the $25 billion national mortgage settlement filed in federal court last month. Now, part of that settlement requires the five leading mortgage servicers to forgive at least $10 billion in principal that homeowners owe on mortgages. And as we've discussed before, principal reduction, I believe, we believe Mm -hmm. collectively, is Mm -hmm. critical to us getting to a point where the market is able to normalize. And until we get our delinquency rates down below or our foreclosure rates down below 3% or somewhere in that ballpark, Mm -hmm. and there are less folks that owe more than what their home is worth, this this particular predicament is going to continue to drag out long term. Well, and I know, you know, just generally speaking, last week we were talking about the history of foreclosures mm-hmm. and whatnot, and the numbers were very high back in uh, the depression, mm-hmm. and that's what really, you know, one of the one of the effects of the depression. And I find it really interesting that we're all sitting and waiting still. <laughs> For them to come up with solution that are going to put us on the path to recovery, Tangible which is what they worked term. really hard on back in that time. Sure. So, I mean, it was definitely something that the government had to step in and make some calls on and, and push, um, make some changes. The the longer the hole has boats in it. Uh-huh. I mean, this, <laughs> the I, there I go. Mobile Your tongue again. is tied <laughs> in a knot. really messed up this morning. <laughs> As long as the boat has holes in it, yes, and the longer this boat takes on water, right. the more pliable everyone becomes because right. there's more data mm-hmm. to help these servicers and the federal government mm-hmm. help to figure it out in terms of what benefits them the most. Right, and 2.0, two months ago, we were going, it's not going to happen. 
not going to happen. No, and now sure it's starting to move like. in that direction. So what's going on with the lawsuit uh, as far as who's going to benefit, who's not going to benefit? Well, principal reduction will help underwater uh, borrowers who owe more on their mortgages than their homes are worth. But the level of principal reduction that they get may well depend upon who owns their actual loan. Some of the Bank of America borrowers will see their principal cut to the point where they will not be underwater. Interesting to note, but the settlement terms only require J.P. Morgan Chase, as an example, or Wells mm-hmm. Fargo and Citibank to write their mortgages down to the point where borrowers' loans are 20% more or 120% of their current home's values, although the banks can write them down deeper if they choose. And right. that's going to be a situation that if it benefits them in the long run, mm-hmm. then yes, they might. Okay. So Ally Financial, formerly okay. GMAC, meanwhile, has settlement terms that require it to write down some first lien home loans to no more than 5% of the home's current value. In some cases, ally borrowers may see loans written down to an 85% loan to value, Wow! meaning borrowers could have at least 15% equity in their homes. Well, the differences stem from Bank of America striking a separate agreement, and we've talked about this before, with federal officials that allows it to avoid 815 excuse me, $850 million in penalties by making deeper cuts in loan principal. So it's a trade, mm-hmm. penalties for principal reduction. My guess is is there there is a huge tax advantage for someone like Bank of America to instead of off. paying exactly it's an expense either mm-hmm. way but one of them requires cash out of pocket the other mm-hmm. one requires a write down or a write off of <laughs> it cross of out a, the number in the book and bad, we just change it okay bad, yeah yeah I don't know if that's mark to market or yeah, what know. that is it's like a for, it's like a it's like a blue light special it is <laughs> B of A homes <laughs> exactly well Ally had already modified twenty eight percent of its home loans, so it needed more write-down options to satisfy its portion of the settlement. Well, all told, the servicers must provide $20 billion in mortgage relief to borrowers and $5 billion to state and federal governments for foreclosure avoidance and education programs. Given the complexities of the mortgage market, it's next to impossible to give the same deal to every homeowner. And that's the sad thing about this particular settlement, is not all homeowners really are created equal. To satisfy their settlement obligations, the servicers will modify loans and receive credit against what they owe under the settlement again. (laughs) <laughs> it's <laughs> it benefits them some way. I feel like I'm reading tax laws. <laughs> like it's so confusing. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, anyways, keep exactly. going. I'm sorry, well, I interrupted. No, 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 that's fine. Under the settlement, <laughs> services are likely to modify the loans they own themselves rather than the ones they service for investor owners. In other words, mm-hmm. again, uh, Bank of America might be the servicer, but not the underlying owner of that particular loan. Distressed homeowners whose loans are owned by Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae won't benefit from that settlement. That's where you've got to take advantage of HARP 2.0 if you if you if if there's any hope as far as interest rate reduction. But HARP 2.0 is not principal reduction. We're almost a political season, aren't we? Because <laughs> I'm really concerned. Why is it that the government-backed securities are the ones that are having to stay where they're at. And all the private entities are the ones taking the tax cuts. Yeah, yeah interesting. Big bucks. Yeah. Big bucks keep generating more bucks. Sorry, I should have kept my mouth shut. I'll just, yeah. Interesting to note, you know, wow. borrowers, I know, I know. It's I just an you. interesting way, the turn of events, it's I guess, is dichotomy. what I would say. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Borrowers who lost homes to foreclosures will be eligible for payouts from the $1.5 billion fund. That could mean approximately 750,000 borrowers getting about $2,000, estimates are, somewhere between two and $3,000 each. Um, federal officials have estimated. Well, a claims administrator will oversee that particular part of the settlement to see if you are eligible. That's like... The, it's like it paid for the U-Haul that came and picked up your stuff the day you left your house. Uh, I'm sorry. Isn't it just adding insult to it injury? It is. I'm just like, wow, really? 
I didn't Next thing yeah. you know, we're going to hear that they're going to make the check, but we're going to make the check payable to you and your former servicer. So you got to get somebody from the servicer oh, to Lord sign off. Oh, Lord mercy. God help us all. But doesn't that sound, doesn't <laughs> yeah. that sound about the logic like that, that would yeah. apply? Yeah, actually oh, does. Oh, my gosh. Well, the size of the payouts will depend upon how many people apply. You know what? <laughs> it's something also tells me. <laughs> There's an application process? Excuse me. Um, I was calling Insult about my injury. That's I was calling sure. about <laughs> receiving payment on my payout because I lost my home please press eight yeah yeah talk to the <laughs> servicer really wow if you even know if if the servicer is even in available in business <laughs> in existence wow. still has a pulse i tell you it is like tax laws like we might as well just I, i'm not trying to make light of no, it. We I'm, I, we I'm, I'm making light of the complexity of how difficult is it for a homeowner that lost their home to file a claim, I can only imagine, I really can only imagine just exactly how complicated it's going yeah, to be. Yeah, how many paycheck stubs, how, yeah, your whole life, you know, met, le, le, your whole life story is going to have to go on that application. What do you want to bet? That's just how it rolls with the if you, if you're, any kind of, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How well, can you prove you that that was your house? It's no longer your house. They're the- going to require, <laughs> they are going to re- can you provide a utility bill? <laughs> that was a year and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't live there anymore. I, d- I don't live there anymore. <laughs> There's going to be some sticking point that yeah. is going to make it really difficult for homeowners to be able to. to, to, to well, and the funny part about that yeah. is we know how difficult this whole process was when the, the whole short sale industry began, you know, just a couple of years back when we were all trying to figure out how this was going to roll. Right. Nobody could find anything when we needed them to. And now we're we're going to expect them to be able to go back and look at records. I went to Wells Fargo recently because mm-hmm. I, I just finished um, um, d- divorce. Um, but nonetheless, the whole point was they needed to document some records of a particular account. Mm-hmm. I had the account with Wells Fargo. Right. So I go in to get this documentation, and they're like, well, did you come from World Savings, or did you come from... I'm like, no, I was always your client. The account is, to my knowledge, closed, right, right, but right. you know, I have to have this documentation to show it. They couldn't find it. They couldn't even find... And I'm, I'm like a local person in the local bank that I opened it in. With I wasn't a transferred person, so right, can you imagine right. the chaos... And that's nothing. Again. They did finally find it, and they were wonderful, and they gracious and helped me. So I'm not bashing them in any way. I'm just saying that's that's how the simple stuff gets taken care of. <laughs> Can you imagine how many thousands of people are going to be trying to to take advantage of this and the hoops? I can just oh, we've seen it. The time records and t- exactly. that they're trying to we've go seen through. it time and time again. Those homeowners that have fallen through the wow. crack. What about those homeowners <laughs> that thought they lost their home a year and a half ago? And, and it's still re- under and, their name? It's still under their name. <laughs> yeah. And still haven't, quote unquote, you know. Gone to the courthouse? Exactly. It hasn't yeah. gone to the court, courthouse steps. All I know is I'm waiting yeah. for the day that they are going to institute a height, weight, and age requirement in order to collect on a foreclosed <laughs> property. We'd like your fingerprints, blood yeah, type, ex- shoe size. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It ceases to amaze us. Yeah. But those are the things we're gonna, we are going to talk about here on our show. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that we cover on the show, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off-air number, 800-979-3958, or you can check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com, or just use press for keyword, KMJ Call Craig, and you'll get connected to us anytime. Well, after the break, we are going to take a closer look at the flow of foreclosures <laughs> following this $26 billion robo-signing nice. agreement. Well, make sure you stay right here. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. 
All it takes is one call to the professionals at Valleywide Homes, and you'll start building wealth in real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing investment property, let the experts at Valleywide Homes help. There's never been a better time to get into the real estate market. Visit our website at reofresnohomes.com or call toll-free 800-979-3958. That's 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals of Valleywide Homes to work for you. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, foreclosure sales are set to ramp up per a number of experts <laughs> post robo signing $26 billion settlement. $26 billion. We, You know, we were just on the break talking about the lotto and how the lotto had, you know, people lining up for tickets. I, I, I was telling Craig, I don't, I don't think anybody's lining up for this robo money. <laughs> <laughs> or how easy is it going to be? They have more faith in the lottery. I'd have to say. I mean, really. And I, they probably have, have to show to less documentation to get their chunk. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> the dollar ticket is all you got to have, exactly. right? And, a, and an ID. <laughs> well, you had mentioned during the break we were talking about $26 billion. You yeah. know, that is a big, big That's number. a lot of zeros. Yeah. yeah. Well, $640 million was mm -hmm. the, uh, the the lottery so or the mega a, millions. Yeah. How many times? This is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to get my calculator times. out to figure out the zeros. Well, let me throw another kind of curveball at you when we start talking about um, $26 billion mm -hmm. settlement between... Mm -hmm. The federal government and those five large institutions. Remember that whole TARP? <laughs> Seven hundred billion dollars in TARP in TARP money. Originally it was distributed amongst all of those banks, some that needed it, some that didn't. But some are just having Christmas parties. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the way the news tells that's it. That's the sad reality, yeah. yeah. Well, it, so many of – every one of those banks that was that was sat down in front of Hank Paulson back in the day mm -hmm. was told that whether you needed the money or not, you, you got to take, take, take it. Because if you don't take it, those that do are going to be perceived as weak or failing. Mm -hmm. And that's going to create a, a huge drop in consumer confidence. And when there's a huge drop in consumer confidence, you're also going to see a run on the bank. So again, my question is, <laughs> why couldn't they have divvied all that money up? And, amongst the folks. Uh, amongst the folks it. that really needed it. Yeah, I agree. Come up with some, if you're, if you're in the mode of printing money, Help the folks that are considered in needing. Yeah, uh, that are. Well, I don't want to say helpless, but no. help the folks that needed the help. Right. I mean, there was a lot of things that went on that everyone admits was unethical and things that shouldn't have happened. Nonetheless, we are where we are. Let's move forward. But you know, I'm just amazed that we. Everybody has scrutinized them for handing that money to those banks mm -hmm. to such a degree, and now they sign this, which I, I think the goal is 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 correct. But the process in which they're going to get there, none of us have any faith in because right. these are the same folks who did exactly took the money to get us in this position and then took the money the government handed them. And now who's going to administer this and make sure this happens so correctly? Here's another question. You bring up a really good point. This leads me to question. So if the federal government or those 49 states attorney generals mm -hmm. had not <laughs> had not actually sued these large mm -hmm. companies... Do you think they would have done what they're being required to do? Okay, well, I don't see that this is any different than what they're doing, with the exception of there might be some homeowners who get to stay in their homes. I mean, that's really all this is going to do. Right. Really, that's all. Which is a great thing, don't get me wrong. Sure. But it's it seems like a very long journey mm -hmm. to get to that point when so many great ideas and so many great solutions were trying to be derived a couple of years ago, this just is a long journey to get to this point where we keep a few homeowners in their houses. Well, well those ideas actually made too much sense. I'm thinking that's the and case. And unfortunately, I don't think, my personal opinion is, I don't think, this, this is really just scratching the surface. Oh, yeah. When you talk about the percentage or the number of loans that these, that Wells Fargo, Bank of America, City Chase, and Ally Bank, right. loans that they actually service mm -hmm. that are eligible for help under this particular settlement, it is just a drop in the bucket. Yeah, exactly. And, and kind of a slap in the face when mm -hmm. you talk about an $850 million 
fine that the Bank mm-hmm. of America would have had to have paid, but in lieu of, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. In other words, no, Bank of America would not have reduced principal balances mm-hmm. had they not been forced to. No, and that's exactly. A, that's a sad, sad testament. And so then you have to wonder, and, and because I'm always you know, going back to the numbers, you go back to the numbers of how much it cost for us to all sue those people, every mm-hmm. attorney general, and then you go back to the cost it has been to take all those houses away. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. I don't know. I just think $26 billion, really, guys? And how are we going to divvy that out? And, yeah, the, I mean, it just seems like it, it does read like some kind of tax law that's so confusing that really most consumers don't buy into it anymore. Sure, we, sure. I mean, they just don't feel confidence in well, that piece of the pie, yeah, piece of the puzzle. Totally agree. Well, estimates have that uh, foreclosures in 2012 are going to increase mm. uh, pretty dramatically as lenders start to move more aggressively to dispose of distressed assets held up by the mortgage servicing gridlock over the last 18 months, um, according to Realty Track. Well, we are going to see uh, pre-foreclosures are beginning to outnumber REO sales in several, several markets. While pre-foreclosure sales are up overall, they are way up in some of the hardest hit states like Michigan, which is up 103%, Georgia up 59%, and Arizona up 48%. Now, interesting to note, the average price of a pre-foreclosure home in the fourth quarter of 2011 was 21% below that of a non-foreclosure home, according to Realty Track. Well, the average discount, this is, again, like we've discussed in the past, mm-hmm. the t- statistics that help tell us really what's the benefit to the servicer, because mm-hmm. ultimately it's going to be what benefits the servicer. Mm-hmm. The average discount on an REO property or a foreclosure sale uh, was 36%. Wow. Foreclosures, however, still... Um, take up about half as long to sell as the short sale process, in their estimation, is lengthy at an average of 318 days. Now, that's nationally. Keep in mind, that is in states where the foreclosure process um, is judicial foreclosure. Right. And we are non-judicial. And we are cases. non-judicial. And mm-hmm. that is, like you had mentioned mm-hmm. last in last week's show, mm-hmm. uh, the intent is 90 days, you know, you're down 90 days, you're notice done. of default. Mm-hmm. Another 90 days, notice of sale. Another 21 days, done. You're, you're, you are mm-hmm. going to sale at the courthouse steps. Right. Well, as banks work more quickly through more than 4 million delinquent loans and 2 million more in the foreclosure process, pre-foreclosure or foreclosure, foreclosure sales are likely to increase in 2012. While the government is offering new incentives for banks to modify loans, many mortgages simply just won't be able to be saved. Well, and that's – that. uh, just let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. Mortgages simply can't be saved, and many reasons is for a couple years now, the banks wouldn't even talk with you unless you were behind because they didn't have the manpower to talk to those who were still – holding their own. So some folks were directed in cases by institutions, go late and then we can talk to you. Right. So I, I mean, I know of some folks mess- who brought that to me as, as the issue. So now they're in a situation where they've had these late payments. They're not going to be able to do a refi. And just to, to add or clarify that, the message is coming from the servicer, mm-hmm. not the underlying owner of the Correct. note, because the servicer believes firmly, mm-hmm. we can't help you unless mm-hmm. you are delinquent. Right. Right. So become delinquent. Right. So you become a statistic. Right. And now I can help you. And now that some of these solutions they're trying to bring to the table, you no longer qualify for. Exactly. So we got to be careful. I mean, it's definitely worth checking into, but you want to try to keep those mortgages current if you can uh, in any way, shape, again, or form. Again, the underlying mortgage, uh, the underlying statement is this, always make your mortgage yeah. payment unless, of course, there is some mm-hmm. hardship that you can't. That right. you can't. Mm-hmm. Always, always, always. Yeah. Well, short sales are still a more profitable art- alternative to servicers, hands down, and the statistics show it. Um, as servicers get more efficient with the short sale approval process, more and more homeowners are going to be looking towards short sales as a manageable means of moving on mm. down the road. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that we cover here on our show, we would love to hear from you. Call us anytime at our off-air number, 800-979-3958, or you can check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com, or just use press 4 keyword, KMJ, call Valleywide, to get connected to us 
any time. That's any time. Well, after the break, we are going to give you some tips on how to win in today's real estate market. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, well, winning. I rolled double sixes on this game. Thank you very much. (laughs) Well, winning means different things to different people. (laughs) Stay right here. You are not going to want to miss this. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as its appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958, and put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952, California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 Six zero. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now here's Craig. Well, Michelle, in this last segment, we're going to talk about something that I it's I hold very near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about how to win in today's real estate market in today's ultra competitive real estate market. Isn't well, that the truth? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a competitive real estate market. How do buyers really, truly achieve success without sacrifice? And I, I, I keep saying this to one of my clients. <laughs> How do you achieve success without sacrifice? Because every, it really does, to me, seem like everything that comes out of her mouth is, well, it'll do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Because she's, she's tired. She's frustrated. Um, it is ultra competitive. And that's where, yes. that's where I believe, setting the right expectation. Um, it, it is extremely, extremely important. Well, success in today's market is relative depending upon your goals. Is it buying your primary residence? Is it buying an investment property? Is it purchasing a second home um, at the coast or up mm-hmm. in Shaver Lake? Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit real quick about what's going on in today's market. What, do you, what are some of the trends that you see in terms of um, how just kind of in general as far as how busy is it out in today's market? Oh, it's, what, <laughs> let's be honest, I walked in your office, threw something on your desk, and I need help today. I, I truly, I mean, the phones are ringing off the hook. I mean, for those folks that are truly looking for properties, they want to, um, they they want to either buy low, fix up, right, and rent out or, or flip. There's some sure. of those folks who are calling us all the time wanting to know what's going on out there. But then we have a ton of first-time home buyers um, that are just, uh, you know, really anxious to, to try this. You know, what they look at it almost like a game, I think, of, sure. in, you know, their first home. Um, and is it, a, it, is it a good time to buy? Well, let's, it, let's it, talk it, about it can, that real quick. Well, it can be depending on what you're wanting. In, in California, when you take mm-hmm. a look at Cal- California's uh, uh, housing affordability index, mm-hmm. we are at uh, levels that we were back in 2001, 2002. So it is one of the most affordable times Correct. to purchase a home. Correct. But not to be misconstrued with, because the age old question is, is it a buyer's market or is it a seller's market? In terms of affordability. In affordability, I'm thinking buyers. Certainly. And competitive pricing and where we're headed, it's definitely sellers. It is definitely, definitely a seller's definitely market. Sellers. Because in today's market, what you're seeing is, is you're seeing inventories at a low mm-hmm. that we haven't seen in quite some time. Mm-hmm. We only have between two and three months really in an inventory um, right at the moment. So why is inventory low? They keep talking about this quote unquote shadow inventory mm-hmm. that because of the robo signing agreement that mm-hmm. we were talking about earlier, foreclosures may rise, but not necessarily as a result. Right. Of 
of um, or excuse me, inventory may rise, but not necessarily as a result of quote unquote the shadow inventory. I keep hearing folks that saying it's just not there. Foreclosures may rise because some banks, those folks that we keep hearing uh, have been in their home for a year and a half or two years and have not made a payment. That is mm -hmm. the inventory that we could see right. that's going to be hitting the market over right. the next 12 months. Um, so inventory being low is relative. It does make it very much so a seller's market. You're seeing mm -hmm. many, many instances where you're seeing multiple offers mm -hmm. on one property at oh any given gosh. time. Oh, my gosh. I went to see a short sale yesterday with mm -hmm. a client. Short sale's been on the market less than a week. Yep. He had no activity for the first couple of days, which is unusual for where sure. their price point is. Five of us came through yesterday. Yeah. Five families came through yesterday. Um, I submitted an offer this morning. Um, he hadn't received any others, but he expected more. Sure. And that was a short sale. That was sure. not... Well, you're seeing m many more agents much mm -hmm. more pliable in terms of short oh, sure. sales. How We've discussed in the past, a lot of agents would not want to show short sales uh, or just flat out refused. Mm -hmm. Now, because of inventory levels being what they are, mm -hmm. they're forced to. They, they really are because their buyers are coming to them because of right. all the information that's available on the Internet. And they're saying... Right. We like this one house over here. It's a short sale. Will you show it to us? Yeah. Well, not only that, a lot of the properties that sit on the market for a long time have some major deficiencies, which mm -hmm. well, I know we'll go into in a few weeks. But um, you can show your client those deficient properties, and then they see the dollar signs, sure. and they're concerned about that. Right. Or you can run them to the quickest, newest short sale on the block that you think is probably in good to fair condition. And, has a and see if it, and it has a caretaker. <laughs> exactly right. It, it really has a caretaker. Does. It makes a big difference when those lawns are mowed. Most I mean, it really does. It, it does. Mm -hmm. And they're green. Yeah, a exactly, huge difference. Exactly. Well, in today's inventory makeup, when you talk Fresno County, single mm -hmm. family residences, when I pulled these stats this week, roughly there was 14, excuse me, 1,542 active listings, wow. single family residences in Fresno County. That's roughly between two and three months of mm -hmm. inventory, which is uh, about 1,000 homes less than what we were seeing or what we were trending last Last year, same time. Of this makeup, 902 were, or 58%, were traditional sales, traditional seller. Uh, 368, or 23%, were short sales. And 17%, or 272 of those mm -hmm. active listings, were REOs. Wow. Those suckers are coming on the market, and they're going pending before you know it, unless, yeah. like you had mentioned, mm -hmm. there's some serious or huge deficiency mm -hmm. as far as, and we say, when we say huge deficiency, we're talking about the condition of the property. It's got some serious, serious issues, mm -hmm. whatever the issue might be. Well, when, an, when a, uh, a buyer goes out, and let's say they are a first-time home buyer and they're looking for a property, you're having to compete with cash investors. They're being the price points where they are, mm -hmm. uh, many, many cash investors. And, and you hear folks ca bringing cash from all over, not just the country, but mm -hmm. the world yes. coming into our market and looking for affordable housing to purchase. So how difficult is it to compete with cash investors? Well, ultimately, hands down, cash still is king to a certain key mm -hmm. or to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. Most cash investors expect to come in and get a significant discount mm -hmm. because they are paying cash. That investment strategy does not work unless you have a property that is seriously deficient in right. terms of, like, our, as an example, our listing on Alamos in Clovis. Uh -huh. um, it is in contract now. Um, Neighborhood values for that particular square footage, probably somewhere between, I think Jeff had comped it out um, on his broker price opinion, about 145 okay. somewhere in that ballpark, for all the properties within roughly a half mile radius. Well, right. the listing price was 109.8. Uh -huh. It needed a roof. It needed okay. floor coverings. It needed updating. It right. needed some significant, significant right. work. You still had investors coming in on that and offering you know, 10% off of asking because they expected the thing, that the, discount. And, and, and this is the part that cracks me up. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the seller gets their money one way or the other, whether and, you're cash and or you're lending. And that's exactly the mentality the sellers have is yeah. they're willing to wait. Yeah. When you have all offers side by side, uh -huh. some seller, excuse me, some buyers, uh, they cling to that because yeah. that, that might be a social thing as in terms of <laughs> yeah. or a cultural thing. That's just how they operate. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. Ultimately, when the day is done, mm -mm. the seller, if it's an institution, right. they are going to expect the highest net to their institution, right. period. Regardless right. of whether it's cash, regardless of whether it's FHA financing, conventional financing, right. VA financing, USDA mm -hmm. financing, it does not matter. Although that's a funny comment, 
that we just ha-ha no, or funny ironic. Yeah, ironic that you say that. I'm sorry, funny ironic. Because just the other day you and I were having a conversation about how so many agents we come in contact with mm-hmm. think that's the only way to sell these properties right, in some right. cases. Well, it's got to be cash. Why does it have to be cash, I say to them? Yeah. <laughs> like, Excuse yeah. me? Exactly. <laughs> if I have but, a bank, we'll fund it. What, what do see, you care? That's the advantage, <laughs> and that's why you do well in the industry is because oh. in a few weeks we're going to talk about 203K financing for those properties to give you a little snippet and wet your whistle as far as what we're going to talk about two weeks from now. Let me tell you, <laughs> there's many, many opportunities for folks yeah. that are looking to purchase a property for their primary residence yeah. to use 203k financing Mm -hmm. to take what could be or what could look like a real dog Mm -hmm. that needs some rehabbing Mm -hmm. and with a little cash you've got one of the best properties on the block right a little cash and a whole lot of love (laughs) right but it's yeah yeah i just yeah i find it definitely an education process most definitely with our community one of the things i think it's really important as well we talked about short sales 368 or 23 percent of the active listings in Fresno's market and honestly these numbers hold pretty true and pretty consistently Um, one things with regards to buyers make sure that you understand that a sales price on a short sale is just a number if you like the property I always tell every single client if you like it drive it if you still like it we comp it because Mm -hmm. don't like the number like the property like the neighborhood because that number that's associated with that particular sales price may not be real and a lot of agents because they they want to stir up activity as far as short sales are concerned they'll price those short sales let's say 10% below market. And they do that to create activity. They do that to create somewhat of an artificial auction type atmosphere Mm -hmm. that ultimately, if the selling agents are on task and they understand, quote unquote, there is no such thing as a deal in today's market. You're talking about affordable housing. If you like it, I never want you to pay more than what you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I never want you to pay more than what that property is worth. And market will tell you, what is that property worth? So remember on short sales, short sales are just a number. Well, and the nice part is, I, I don't care if you have a couple hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank. You know, if you're new to this game, it's great that you have it. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, the bank who finances that home is not going to allow you to pay more unless you just want to. No, it, well, That's what it, bank appraisals yeah, are if, for. If, yeah, <laughs> if you've got money to burn, yeah. you might be able to burn some of it, but yeah. you better have s- sufficient cash. And, and we've seen And that. trust who you're working with because Certainly. of that. I mean, let's be honest. Also, to, you bring up a really good point, and let's touch on it real quick. When you say trust who you're working with, because does your agent really have your best interest at heart and right. allowing you, would, would they suggest that you pay more than what a property is worth as well? Mm. you got to be really, really careful. Well, does the strategy differ? And I think this is a huge question. Does the strategy differ when you're looking for a home from a traditional sale to a short sale to an REO? Basically, mm-hmm. it really doesn't when it comes time for a, for valuation as far as the property is concerned. Ultimately, if you like it, drive it. Mm-hmm. If you still like it after you drive it, what do the comps say? Mm-hmm. Every single property, whether it's a traditional sale, REO, or a short sale, there's a valuation process attached to it. Mm-hmm. Now, it's really a matter of what's relative. What are you going to be able to secure? What's the property going to appraise at when it comes time for financing? Just what you just said. Um, ultimately, it's worth what it's worth. Mm-hmm and the market's going to tell you what it's worth. Mm -hmm. Well, the last thing that we're going to talk about is being efficient as far as your search is concerned before we talk about the tips to win in today's market. Setting up that portal that we talked about Mm -hmm. earlier in our Find Your New Home segment, setting up that portal helps to make you way more efficient as opposed to just going online, going to realtor.com, or going to any of the other um, hundreds and hundreds of home searching websites out there. The information that you're going to receive from our search is Mm -hmm. going to be active properties. Um, It is going to be timely, meaning that it's going to show you the current status of that particular Mm -hmm. property, whether it's active, pending, backup, um, withdrawn, what sold, whatever it might be. And as it changes, I'm going to, for instance, I put an offer on a property two weeks ago. We got an acceptance. My Mm -hmm. client drove it again. They're from out of town and they said, Michelle, I don't want this property. Yeah. That property went right back on the market. Yep. It went right back on the market. The seller's agent had to put it right back on the market. Sure. So you're going to see that activity, too, as it comes and goes and changes. And sure. anything that might transpire, maybe the client can't secure financing. That house will go back on the market, and you will be able to see that and as it happens. A, a, exactly. Real time. That, that status will be reflected mm-hmm. real time. That's what real I'm looking time. for, real time. I'm glad well, I help. tips to winning. T- <laughs> <laughs> you do bring a lot That's to the show. That's why I'm here. Exactly. Well, specific tips to win in today's market. Number one, get pre-approved or have 
have mm. your cash verified. If you're paying cash, folks, the, the Tim's seller, bag of money doesn't Tim's work. Tim's bag of money. Uh, well, <laughs> can't bring you, the bag of money. You, or take a big, take a picture. It takes me too bag. long to photocopy it all. It does. Okay. Well, make sure you're taking. Make sure you're getting pre-approved. Make mm-hmm. sure that you are verifying that cash with yes. a, a you know a bank statement or last two months bank statements. Right. Find the property efficiently. Utilize that portal. Drive it. See it. If you still like it, let's comp it. Let's yeah. make sure that the asking price is real, and let's make sure that it's reflective of what current market values are. Don't offer over your head. Just because it's competitive, the next best property is going to be the next best property. Don't pay more than you feel comfortable spending, but more importantly, never pay more than what that home is worth. Mm-hmm. That's what got us into some of this, <laughs> some of yeah. these problems yeah, exactly. uh, back, uh, you know, seven, five, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Uh, the other thing I think is real, real critical is save your money as a buyer. Buyers, save your money. And the reason I say save your money is when it comes to competitive offers and you've got five offers side by side, the highest net to the seller is going to be the one that's going to get accepted, which means this. You've got to make sure that if you don't ask for a seller concession, so many agents are and so many buyers are pro- pre-programmed, pre-programmed to ask for a 3% mm-hmm. seller concession as far as the market's concerned. You don't have to. Mm-mm. If you don't ask for a seller concession, it's going to make your, your offer stronger. Be patient and remember the next best home is the next best home. It always is. It always rings true. You know, amen, there's always another home there out is. there. It, it, I, I tell you. Things happen for happen. a reason. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on today's show, we'd love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958 or check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com. Or just use press for keyword KMJ call Valley Wide to get connected to us any time, any day of the week. Well, a big thank you to my special guest host. As Am I special? always, you I, are I special am. guest Thanks. host. Michelle I appreciate Pettis, you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Anytime. Happy Easter again, by the way. And as always, it is a big thank you to Johnny B behind the mics. Johnny, you make us sound so good. Now he's a special <laughs> one. Our goal, remember, is to get you the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back home. Don't forget to tune in to the Real Estate Radio Network next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. right here on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Local news, local talk. Make it a great day, Central Valley, and we will see you right here next week. The preceding program was paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network.